Hello and welcome to today's video. It feels good to be back. I have not made any videos in a week. I am sorry for this, but now I will start uh, making them again. Um, but I will make some changes. So not daily uploads because that's actually a lot of work. Uh, I will put a, an upload plan somehow on my channel. So I will limit my uploads, but it should still be enough for you. Don't worry, don't worry. <clears throat> yeah, today's topic is the different types of timers uh, that we can use or that we should use for our PLC. I have listed here the four, you can see it on the top left. Right, top left, you see uh, pulse, on delay, off delay, retentive on delay. Um, those are the four different timers that we have. And this retentive on delay, by the way, also called time accumulator, so it's both names. <clears throat> the others are called as they are written there. <clears throat> this video, I will only talk about what are those four different timer types. The next videos, I will show you how to implement them in the program, how to actually work with them. And yes, I know there are more than four types in existence, but those four are the ones that engineers all over, actually Europe, yeah, pretty much Europe, IEC is European Commission, yes. Um, they decided those are the standard ones and not just the Siemens PLCs can use those, but also other PLCs and other types of controllers. So those are the four standard ones. So I will only show those. There are more, especially when we get to the S5 family, older ones. Those were not really standardized. They exist, but well, you shouldn't use them anymore. Those are the four standard ones, right? Those up in the corner. See them? <clears throat> yeah. I've got a door here, right? I've got this door and I've got a button and I've got a value. Those are the three things. We've got the retentive timer. The time accumulator has two buttons. I will get to this, but that's what all of them have. Right. So my pulse timer is the first type of timer here. Let's analyze what the buttons do and what, what this is. So I've got a door. This door should open. Well, <laughs> that's pretty easy. It should open and close for a specific amount of time. We see this timer value. Each timer that we have has a specific timer value. This is basically how long has the timer been active. You see some of them, they have uh, 5000 milliseconds and some of them have zero. So there is something already in there. I have set all those timers to five seconds, which is 5,000 milliseconds. So all of them do something for five seconds, 5,000 milliseconds. <clears throat> Let's see the pulse timer. If I click, when I click on this open door button, boop, right? You see timer starts, timer is running. As long as this timer is running, the door is open. After five seconds, the door closes automatically, right? That's the pulse timer. I'm clicking the button and then a pulse right? A pulse is a specific amount of time the thing is on and then it's off. So that's the pulse, right? We're opening something for a pulse amount of time that we give, right? Even if I click here, I open the door a thousand times, it only reacts on the first time we press the button and then has this pulse. As soon as the pulse is over, it's back to zero. Once more, I'm sending the pulse. The pulse here is five seconds. One, two, three, four, five doors closed again. That's a pulse timer, right? We just want to do something on an action for the next five seconds. It does not matter if this action is then on or off. Um, we just want to do it as soon as this button is pressed and then for the next five seconds. Doesn't matter what happens with this button, right? If I click it a thousand times, if I don't click it at all anymore, that's what happens, right? That's the pulse timer, first type of timer. The next one, very similar, is the off delay timer. Right? And you can see this off delay timer actually starts at five seconds. So it has this five seconds already in there, the 5,000 milliseconds. And as soon as I hit the button, you see, actually goes back to zero. That's strange. And it goes up to 5,000 again. You saw that? So it starts at zero. It goes up to 5,000. Right? So it looks very similar to the pulse timer. You see that, right? It, so right now, if I just click once, if I just click once very, very fast, it's the same as the pulse timer. The difference between those two is if I keep this button pressed, you see, the timer does, it opens, so it turns true, it turns active, but it stays active forever until I release the button. And then we have additionally those five seconds. We're turning off this door by five seconds, right? And then we stay at 5,000 and we see, yeah, this is the reached value. So even if I do it again and again, you see, it's still in those five seconds. And if I press again, we're delaying it again, 
by five seconds. So we're resetting it. So I can keep the door open forever, right? I press and I press and I press. This is an off delay, right? And if I keep it pressed, there is no off right now. So the off does not delay. The off only delays as soon as there is an off. And now the off is delayed by five seconds. Again, right? <laughs> now, again, five seconds. Now this time I won't press again. And one, two, three, four, five, door closes. Off delay, right? The pulse timer is only a special type of off delay, basically, where it does not react on the button again. It only reacts on the button in the beginning once, and then it waits for five seconds or the specific amount of time, and then it actually uh, goes back to zero. So it's just a special type of off delay. Next type is the on delay. So I've got my button again. I press the button. The door does not open. You see, I press the button, but it doesn't open. 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 It doesn't open, right? It, it won't open. The door now waits to turning on. So it doesn't turn on until the timer value is reached. So I have to press the button. One, two, three, four, five. Right? I have to keep the button pressed. That's used a lot for safety stuff, right? For safety stuff where you have to keep something pressed for a long amount of time. And it is open until I release the button, right? And then if I press it only for a short amount of time, it won't open. If I only press it for like three seconds, it won't open. I have to keep it for the full one, two, three, four, five seconds, and then it opens, right? So that's an on delay where we turn it on, we open the door with a delay, right? Third type of standard timer. And we've got one more type of timer. That's a retentive on delay. Retain means remember something, right? Keep it, keep keep it somehow. Also called the, uh, the time accumulator, right? And here I have two buttons all of a sudden. I have my timer value and I have open door. What happens if I hit open door? I just hit it for like, 110 milliseconds. I don't press it anymore, right? And I press it again, and I press it again, and I press it again, I press it again a little bit longer, and there we go. This is an accumulator. I have the button, whenever I press the button, the timer goes up, 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 up. If I release the button, it stays there, right? It stays. So we have accumulated the time for all the button presses, right? Every time I press the button, it gets a little bit more, right? Until we have reached our 5000 and then the door opens. So we are accumulating, we're adding up over time, right? That's why we have a second button. Somehow I have to get this back to zero. So even if I only pressed it for like 1374 milliseconds or whatever value, I can always reset the timer, it goes back to zero, right? This just accumulates over time. How long has this button been pressed in total, right? And of course it has to remember this value at 5,000, it will open again, the specified uh, value. Of course, this is flexible for all of them. It's not always 5,000, it's completely different. You can set that. I'll show you in the next video. And if I had reset, the door closes again. Those are our four standard timers. If you um, need more information, if you haven't understood any of those yet, well, just on the bar, there should be a bar down here, right, somewhere, you can just go back to them in the video and listen to it again or just leave a comment. <clears throat> um, I will try to get to them. It's quite hard. This is just a hobby for me. So there's a lot of uh, videos, a lot of questions you're actually asking, a lot of comments. I'm very thankful for those, but it's so much effort. I'm very, very thankful, but oof, there's so much. I try my best. I try my best and I'm already sorry if I can't get to all of it. <clears throat> yeah. Um, if this video is any helpful for you, um, very good, because then in the next video, I will go on and actually program those, put them in the PLC program using TIA portal, and we will see uh, how they are implemented in the program. Not difficult, actually. Good. Don't forget to like, do not forget to subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. And I'm happy, actually, to make videos again. Pfft, not so much work. The next couple of time I have more time for me, more time for hobbies like this. I'm so happy. <laughs> yeah, um, check out my channel. I will put up some type of plan on when I will upload videos, which will be less frequently than in the past, but more frequently than in the last week. 
maybe two or three videos per week. Thank you for watching. I will see you. I already said that like probably 15 times. Bye-bye. <laughs>